Okay, before we go back to uh, where we left off of a with the minion, I want to just discuss for a few minutes the dinim of the Saint Talmotor, which we began Thursday night, so we didn't have a chance yet to discuss the dinim. If you want to follow the Siddur on page 48, you'll be just be able to follow it easier. Now, number one, in Eretz Yisrael, <clears throat> they begin saying the Saint Talmotor on the 7th of Cheshvan. We start saying Mashiv Aruch Amirir Ageshem and Shmini Atzeres, but we don't say the same Talumot Levrach even in Eretz Yisrael until the seventh of Cheshvan. Outside of Eretz Yisrael, the minig is, and we'll explain why, that we begin December fifth or December sixth, depending if it's preceding a secular solar leap year or not. This year coming up is 2020, so it's a leap year, right? It's divisible by four. So therefore, this year we start saying on the night of December 6th rather than the night of December 5th. But usually it's the night of December 5th. Now what's the difference? The difference is very simple. In Eretz Yisrael, they really, everybody really should start saying the same Talumot al-Avrach, which means give rain, do and rain, as soon as we say, Mashi Baruch HaMerit You know, then we should start saying the same Talumot. But that we don't want to do. Because people still needed to sit in the sukkah, which was that. What, that's why we do it on Shemini Atzeres. But secondly, more important is the people from Eretz Yisrael went up to the Beis Hamikdash for Yom Tif. They had to go home. The Gemara says it took two weeks for the most distant people in Eretz Yisrael to finally make it home. Why don't we start asking for rain before? We don't want them to get stuck. They didn't have planes. I mean, we were traveling, open. So we didn't want, uh, the Chazal didn't want them to get stuck in the rain. So out of generosity to the people traveling in Eretz Yisrael, Chacham said, okay, we're going to wait two weeks. By then, everybody's home. Seventh of Cheshven, we start saying the same Talmud in Eretz Yisrael. Chutz is outside of Eretz Yisrael, the minig is like Bavel. Why is the minig like Bavel? Because in Bavel, they didn't need so much rain like in Israel. So therefore, in Bavel, they began what's called 60 days after Tkufa's Tishrei. After the Tkufa, the season of Tishrei. So on the 60th day, we start at, that's when they did in Bavel, they started saying the same Talmud. In our system, it works like we said, December 5th and December 6th. Why do we follow Bovel. Number one, we don't need rain as much as Eretz Yisrael. But otherwise, another reason is brought down in Halach is because anyway, when we follow Talmud Bavli, whenever there's an argument between Talmud Bavli and Talmud Yerushalmi, the Halach is always like Talmud Bavli. So therefore, we follow Bovel in this respect. Some Paschim say, no, you shouldn't be following Bovel, that's only in Halacha, and this is in reality, we should follow Eretz Yisrael, but whatever, we don't go like that. Now, so another interesting thing is the people in the Southern Hemisphere, the people in the Southern Hemisphere, they have a difference between winter and summer. They're going to summer now. That means Argentina, South Africa, Australia, all those people are now going towards summer. We're going towards winter. They're going towards summer. So they really should have it the opposite say that than we have. When we're saying the same Talamata, they should be saying the same Bracha. And when we're saying the same bracha, they should be saying the same talumot. But the halacha is that we daven for Eretz Yisrael. We daven for Eretz Yisrael, therefore we do by the seasons of Eretz Yisrael. But there's an interesting truth in the Beis Yosef. The Beis Yosef has in the Chuba that if somebody over there made a mistake, that in the summer over there they were supposed to say the same talumot like Israel. But what happens if they made a broad mistake and said the same bracha? They don't have to repeat the Shmanesri because in their country it's summer, not winter. Okay? That's why we begin saying it when we begin saying it. Now, what's the din? If you say, if you want to follow again in the Siddur on page 48, the bottom it says, Baruch Alein is by Shachras, I picked anyway. Talamot al-Ibrach. What happens if somebody says the same Bracha and they finish the Bracha? So if you're still in the Bracha, you go back, you say the same Talamot al and you continue the Bracha. What happens if you say, Baruch Atah Hashem Mevarech Hashanim? You finish the bracha, and then you realize you didn't say the same Talumotor, 
you say it there. The same town umato levracha, and then you begin tka b'shei for God l'cheresinu. Once you say the word tka, you begin already the next bracha. Then you wait in the middle of Shema Kaleinu. On page 50 in the Sidurim, Shema Kaleinu, before you say, Ki ato shemea tfilas kopa, before you say that, you say, Mufanachum alkenu reikum alta shivenu, the same talum alta levracha, Ki ato shemea tfilas kopa, berachato shem shemea tfil. What happens if somebody already said, Baruchato shem shemea tfila? And they remember they didn't say the same talamator. You say the same talamator levracha, and then you begin ritzay. Okay, what happens? You said the word ritzay. You got to go back to barachaleinu. In other words, if you missed it in barachaleinu, you can rectify it in shmakaleinu. But once you said ritzay, so you finish shmakaleinu already. So then you have to go back to the bracha barachaleinu, and then you have to say from there to the end of the shmanesu. What happens if a person finished the Shman Esrei, and by the definition of finishing the Shman Esrei means you said there's two Yirots in him, if you one before Lakai Nitzar, one at the end of Lakai Nitzar. Once you said that Yilorot at the end of a Lakai Nitzar, even though you don't go back three steps yet, I said Sholem, it's called finishing the Amida. Then you go back to the beginning of the Amida. If you're still within the Amida, you go back to, it, to Bar Chalein. If you finish the Amid already, then you have to go back to the beginning of the Amid. What happens if we don't know, we don't, <laughs> we don't remember what we said? We don't remember if we said, but <laughs> the same Talamata, the same Bracha, so you'll have a lot of Kavana. Then the din is we assume that you said what you were accustomed to until now, then you said the wrong thing, and you have to repeat the Shmanasri. In fact, it's interesting, a lady called me the other day. She said, um, at Shachish, she forgot the Saint Talamotor, but she remembered in Mitnacha. In Mincha, she said the Saint Talamotor. So, what should she do? So, Allah, she has to dab in a second Shmanesri for Mincha to make up the Shachis Amida that she didn't do correctly, so it's like you didn't do it. So, she would have to dab in a second Shmanesri to be able to say the Saint Talamotor, even though she said it at Mincha. Okay, that's the din of the Saint Talmud of Rach. The best thing is... One question. What? If uh, they say that like in South America and Australia and everything, they go according to the Paris Israel because anyway they ask... So why don't we start Zion? Because the pearl is not that much of a difference. It's not a whole season difference. And the pearl, that's what they did in Bovel and... We do this. Right. It's very interesting how powerful Bovel was the Gemara says at the end of Ksubis, you know, whoever leaves that, it just feels like they have no God. And the very powerful expressions about leaving Eretz Yisrael and all that. So there's a Me'idi at the end of Ksubis that says that whatever the Gemara says about leaving Eretz Yisrael, you know, the sharp expressions, in the time of the Gemara, if you left Bavel, it was the same thing. That's what the Me'idi is. The Me'idi writes, because Bavel was the Mokum Taita. Then, even though Kimitzin Tate said, but Bavel was the Mokum Tate. So therefore, he, in Bavel, if somebody left Bavel to go to a different country, it would be very sharp expressions against him. Right. What? Just to be sure, so if you remember, after you say the first La Red song, but before the second, what do you do? You go back to Baruch Haleinu. If you said the second you wrote, then you have to go back to the beginning of the Shmanesu, yeah. Okay, back to we left over with uh, in the dinam of davening with a minion, Philip Seaboard, all the ten, the inyan of ten, and so on. Okay, there's an interesting aloha, not interesting aloha, it's a basic aloha. In those parts of davening, we learned already where you're allowed to talk, where you're not allowed to talk, okay? Once you say Baruch Shamar, you're not allowed to talk. In Hebrew, English, Farsi, it doesn't matter, you're not allowed to talk until after Shmanesi. You really shouldn't talk. Now the Rebbe says in Tanya from the first word of davening to the last Amen of the last Kaddish of the whole davening. You shouldn't be talking. But let's talk. Allah says you shouldn't talk until after Shmanesu. Therefore, you, many Chazonim, today it's not so much it used to be, the big Chazonim of yesteryear, 
when they sing chazanis, they would repeat words. Many of them would repeat words in the Kedusha, in the Shman Esrei, in Pesukah uh, Zimno, or uh, more so in Birchaz Krishma. The thing is, chazan is not allowed to repeat words because that's like talking. Because you said the words of davening. Now you're saying extra words, even though it might be the words of the Siddur, but it's still talking because those words don't belong here. So it's mamish like talking. So they, they say any chazan that repeats those you know, words and not just to make the chazan sound better, you have to scream at them and not let them do it and, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and everybody is willing to scream at them. Everybody. No, those people that like chazan is not. Another interesting thing that would probably knock off three quarters of today's chazanim, a person is not allowed to have for the Ahmed if he's not liked by the community. <laughs> he's knocked down three quarters of the chazanim today. If he's belay belat and call, okay, if he's not, because he has to be what's called nahloch in the Gemara, murutz and he has to be accepted for the community. If he's not accepted for the community, then you got a problem. In fact, it says, whoever davens without permission, he just goes to the Yomit and takes over the Yomit, you know, that's it, by force. You're not allowed to answer Amin on his brachis. You're not allowed to recognize the, that he's the chazan and so on and so forth. Okay, next. Huh? You and go. Okay. okay, next is, okay, so in the middle of, uh, middle of Sukkot de Zimra, we are discussing last time what you're allowed to answer, what you're not allowed to answer, okay? So during the Pesukah de Zimna, remember we said, Baruch Hu Baruch Shemai, you're not allowed to answer. Baruch Hu Baruch Shemai, you're not allowed, never allowed to say in a place where you're not allowed to talk. Okay, that's what we said. After Baruch Shemai, you're not allowed to talk, so you're not allowed to say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemai. According to the Alt Rebbe, we said, it, if you say it, Baruch Hu Shmei on a bracha, that you have to be Yetzir, then you're not Yetzir the bracha. The Chsam Sefer disagreed, and he says, they smash with the Chsam Sefer that you could. Anyway, but Amen after most, in the middle of Pesukah de Zimmer, between Baruch Shamar, after Baruch Shamar, because Baruch Shamar we learned already, it's a little different. After Baruch Shamar, until Yishtabach, not including Yishtabach, until Yishtabach, you can answer Amen basically on all brachas, you can say, if somebody gets an aliyah, you can answer amen on the brachas. You say, um, interesting thing, if somebody went to the bathroom, let's say middle of Pesukah de Zimra, between Baruch Shem and Yishtabach, went to the bathroom, and normally after the bathroom, you say Asher Yatzah. So what do you do? Do you say Asher Yatzah in middle of Pesukah de Zimra, or you wait until after Shemun So the thing is, you have to wait until after Shemun But the bracha of the is... No, I'm sorry. No, Ashiyatsi you could say middle of Pesukah de Zimra. I'm sorry, Ashiyatsi you could say middle of Pesukah de Zimra. Um, the Tfilim Bracha also. Huh? Tfilim Bracha also. Tfilim Bracha also. Uh, but then it says, the proper, even by Ashiyatsi it says, you should say between, in, at the end of a paragraph, not in the middle of a paragraph. Wait until the end of a paragraph and then say Ashiyatsi then. Tfilim, it says, you could put on middle of Pesukah de Zimra, but you should make the brachas on the tefillin after Yishtabach before Kaddish. Because that's easier to be uh, mafzik. Um, amen, you could say, Amen of the second half of Kaddish, it's Chabad Minuk, by the way. You know, you have a half of Kaddish, Damir and Baum Vimro Amen. Then you have Yehei Shlom or Al Yisrael, that's called the second half of Kaddish. Our custom is that we don't say Amen on the second half of Kaddish in the middle of Pesukah de Zimra. In the middle of Sukkot Zim, you only say Amen on the first half of Kaddish. Why? Because the primary Kaddish is the first half, not the second half. What happened with uh, the Chazan saying Berchaz uh, Kohenim? Huh? Chazan you can answer Amen on Berchaz Kohenim. Because again, that's also a praise of Hashem. Okay, let's, let's finish this up. Um, okay, so Kedusha, you can answer the whole Kedusha. Maidim, you could say the whole Maidim. You know the petition. You could say Baruchu. You could say the Bracha Kela Kaddish and Shmei Atfili. You could say Amen. Brich um, Shmei, you don't say. Aliyah, you can get. Um, thunder and lightning. By the way, what happened? Californians don't know what this is. There's something called thunder and lightning. 
if you hear thunder and lightning in the middle of Pesukah de Zimri, you could say the bracha, but not um, in Berchus Kishma. <laughs> no, not necessarily. If it's still uh, and the first verse of Shema, you could also say, meaning like this: What happens to your davening? And the uh, minion comes to Shema. So the din is, you have to say the first pasuk of Shema together with them. So in Pesukah de Zimra, you say that you cover your eyes and you say Shema Yisrael Shem Achin Hashem Achad. After you stabach, once you start Berachos Krishma, you just put your hand over your eyes and you say whatever you're at to in the song as if you'd be saying Shema. 